Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm just uh, we just live right now, and I uh, have my friend Robert Gerlach from Australia is joining me to share his story. I'm going to sit down and interview him right now. I'm already sitting down, but uh, let me just bring him onto the screen right now. Give me a second. Uh, hey, Rob. Hey, going everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um thanks for for doing this man for giving your time to sit down and chat about your life uh, yeah. it's an honor. um honor. so what we're gonna do guys will um just remember this this will be uh also uploaded in other areas in other places you'll find it but for now also while we're doing this interview while i'm asking him questions and he's going through his story Feel free to write comments um, on the comment section where you're from, wherever you're watching from. Um, to if, if there's something that you want Rob to expand on, um, or a little bit more detail on something that he said that maybe you're interested in and, he, and it will help you. That's what we're here for. And uh, if we if uh, I see it in time, I'll mention it um, to Rob, and he can open up and say more about that area if you want to speak into that. But for now, if you want, take a moment just to share it with friends, share it on your Facebook page uh, or Messenger, whatever else you, you want to. It'll really uh, speak to a lot of people. It'll really help you, really encourage you and bless you. And uh, we're going to just be, it's, it's relaxed. We're just going to talk as mates and I'm going to ask mm. him questions about his story. And uh, we're just leaving God also uh, open up areas and we're going to go with the flow where we can just mention more things that I know is going to speak to the different people that are going to, that are watching now are going to watch later. So again, welcome. Um, and if you want to write, uh, I can hear you, making sure that you can hear us okay. Um, that'll be great. That'll be helpful to us. But other than that, let's get right into it. Um, all right, Rob. So I wanted to, if you can get us started from um, with your story about from where, how was your upbringing? Did you have a faith in God? Was a was your you know family a religious family? Did they have a faith? What faith was it? And where were you, where were you at with that? Did you believe in God as well, or do you just go along with the flow with what they told you? Uh, yeah, let us know. Thank you, Kim. Kim was uh, telling us that she hears us well. Thank you for joining us, Kim, as well. Missed you. Hope you're a great, girl. But um, yeah, Rob, tell us a little bit about your like your upbringing, your faith in that upbringing, and everything else in your household. Well, I'm. Um... When I was well young, my whole life we, I had a, um, I would consider a very good childhood. I yeah. uh, obviously had my struggles, but generally with the family side of things, it was I have nothing to complain about. I look at, back on the, my childhood very fondly. Um, we uh, went to um, church, the whole family. Uh, I'm just trying to remember um, the church. Anyway, uh, it was Lutheran church. That's right, Lutheran church. And did you did you believe? Did you believe well, for yourself, Rob, or did you just kind of uh, did you talk to God yourself? Like, would you pray because you wanted to pray as well? You know, how were you with that? Other than so, it's good that you had a you guys had a belief and upbringing with uh, a Christian faith, but did you have a real relationship with God? How was that? A relationship with God, no, I did not have. Now, okay. there were times where I, when I look back now, back then I would have, uh, I didn't have a relationship with God. I believed in God. I certainly didn't frown on him at all. I, I, I sort of knew that God was there, but to be taking part in our daily lives, I, I'm not really... I didn't really have a very strong opinion if he was there with me or not. I did have a couple of experiences as um, I was growing growing up with God in mean, those early years. Like a supernatural uh, experience, encounter with God? Well, there was what? one time because I had a very uh, poor opinion of myself, I must admit. Yeah. I, and I'm not really sure how I picked this up that I just felt like that I was dumb. Basically, I felt like I was dumb. I didn't really know much, and and I was really caught in that. 
that I remember going up always feeling like, well, I'm not smart as anyone else. I, okay. And I really struggled with all of that. And I remember having a, um, a moment with God one, night, one day when I was walking home from church. I was there by myself. I was walking home. And I remember thinking about, like, <laughs> more how dumb I was. That's what I was thinking. And then all of a sudden, it's just like this bright light now. I can't remember if it was actually in the spirit or if it was actually in the physical, if you can understand what I'm saying. But yeah. it was felt like a really strong light had came over me and I felt the Lord with these words just felt, so I didn't actually hear them, that, hey, Robert, you might feel dumb, but I have a great plan for you. And I remember yeah. that really touching me. But as life went on, that drifted into the background. And only many years later did that sort of come back to me. So but, did you think the, the feeling like that you're uh, dumb or not, not as smart or as like, or like other people or whatever, was it anybody mocked you or something? Is that why? was Were you bullied at school? Or you, can't, you literally well, can't pinpoint anywhere where this kind of mindset, it just came by itself, you know, some, cause most people, they get this kind of mindsets because of like someone in their life, put them down or school friends bullied them, uh, whatever, you know, what did it just came from nowhere or it came from somewhere? Do you think? Well, no, well, I definitely did get bullied at school. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Um, when I think back through the years, there was uh, many incidences where I guess, um, there had been um, bullied sometimes, very badly and some not so bad but always that underlying thing would always come up you know the enemy is very good at reminding you on how silly or how dumb um, your actions can be or reactions and so on so while i yeah. definitely get um bullied that's for sure yes yeah. okay so you think that might have that's where it began it would have inspired well, that would I would definitely think that would be one of the key places where that would absolutely start, yeah. Okay, so then then you had a kind of encounter with God. You don't know if it was physical that happened. It was so real that you don't know how it was physical or in your spirit, in the spiritual, yeah, it's, that it's, God it's, basically it's, told you that I don't see you that way um, yeah. and uh, he, have, he has great plans for you. So, and how old were you when that encounter happened? Oh, wow. I reckon I would probably have been about like nine, ten, somewhere there. Wow. Man. So that's amazing. Uh, really amazing. Let's praise God for that. Yeah. And you said you had a couple. Did you remember the other one encounter you had? And was that also at a young age with God? Like a couple experiences you said with God? Well, that would be the the major. The other ones as um, when, when I was much older. You know, okay, you know, we'll get to that in a minute then. Uh, so yeah. then, so basically your life was just, you know, school, just normal everyday thing. Did you get into any, uh, were you a troublemaker? Were you uh, just a kind of in the background kind of guy at school? Uh, anything significant there in that area? What was your, you growing up as a teenager in school, you know, getting into the young adult kind of stage? Look, um, probably, I probably feel like I was a very quiet, quiet, I reckon, around people that um, I was probably quick to pick up where I felt comfortable um, being noisy and boisterous um, amongst very close friends, I guess. But generally, like at school and definitely as I was growing up and starting to work, I was a very quiet, very, um, I felt very, very quiet, very background. I would really reserve my opinions to the place where I probably wouldn't even have an opinion on a lot of things. And I would, yeah, basically recluse. Like I even remember as I was, growing up in my teenage years that I would I wouldn't even walk into the shop because I was so maybe anxious and intimidated by how I thought I I was to people around me I guess like I would go to the shop and I wouldn't go in to get my food say 
and I would uh, bribe one of my friends rather to go into the shop for me and I would pay for what they were um, for um, their food and mine you know so I wouldn't have to go in there because I just felt the way people looked at me was very intimidating for me yeah really okay like uh, so you had a low self-esteem in is one of the things that, yeah. that you were struggling with, yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, all right. Anything, anything else significant you wanted to share before we move into the um, where the moments where things started changing, where God started bringing you towards Him, and how that happened? Well, nothing comes to mind at the moment except for that. You know, I, I had a very poor opinion of school, that's for sure. I really struggled at school. I really thought, and I really did struggle at school. It might have been the mindset that really took me to the place of struggle, as the Lord revealed to me many years later. But, yeah, yeah so, and I, and I was good at art. That was the one thing I knew I was good at. And art, that yeah. basically yeah. it. For me, yeah. yeah, and that would probably be the only thing that really underlies my journey, really. We, um, what? and how I come out. My so, you found like the confidence in that you were good at something like that, like uh, art. Well, <laughs> I knew I was good at art, and even then, I knew that God had a plan for me, and I thought, well, what plan could God have for me because I'm pretty much useless at every subject at school. And I thought, I'm only good at art, and how could that possibly be of any good to you, Lord? That's what I thought. That's and right. I really and, and, thought, what a useless gift. I really did. I thought that. Terrible. Yeah. Well, <laughs> guys, you know, be a mo I'm smiling and he's smiling as well because we both know what's coming because we're going to talk to you about what happens later with art. Uh, and the gift God gave him. Um, mm. So, but before we do, before we go in deeper into your story, guys, like I said, stick around. It's just, uh, it, it will really bless you guys as we open this up. Um, but what would you say right now, even to some young people, kids in school, or even uh, adults that are struggling, like you were struggling with so low self-esteem, with um, the way they perceive themselves um, in, a, in a negative way, what would you say that could help them um, overcome that? Overcoming, that is a really good question. It really is a journey. And I have to say, really, my journey of overcoming started when I started um, connecting with the Lord. Not, not really, I would have to say, because there's, when I became like born again, I, I was on still on this feet of trying to prove myself and prove my worth to even the Lord. Mm. And when I've worked out, it's not what you're doing for God. It's actually being with God and being with the Lord together. There really is a very real relationship you can have with him. And that's really where things started to change. I really did. And God does a miracle. You know, it's not like snap, okay, I'm going to have this relationship. No, it's a, it's a journey. It takes time, but I'll tell you, it's worth it. It's worth so it. The journey you uh, would would be right for me to say your journey was, like you said, it wasn't immediate where you found your, your worth and your identity in God. Oh. And it was a journey for you to see that because that's as you mm -hmm. pursued in a relationship with him and doing life with him, he showed you uh, the worth that he has, uh, that yeah. you have in his eyes, how precious you are, um, and so confidence raised up, your esteem changed. Oh, we've got a cat. Hey, buddy. <laughs> he wanted to jump in. <laughs> he wanted to get into the live stream. That was a good one. Uh, but so, yeah, you, you would say that it was as you um, – you know, started having the relationship with God, God started showing you how, what he feels about you and how he sees you in his eyes. And you started believing that more and more. And so you, yeah. you're over, very you know, you're Yeah. Very much so, 
Yeah. So basically the answer would be for the people watching that that's what Jesus does. That's one of the things that Jesus will do is he will show you what you're worth to him. And as yeah. you see yourself, as he sees you, everything changes because you're not trying to uh, raise up to a standard that the world gives you or that you think about you or anyone else thinks about you. They can think about yeah. you as whatever they want to think about you. It doesn't matter. What matters is what God thinks about you because he's your maker. So as you do relationship with him, everything changes. And I encourage you, as we go into this, you don't have to wait for nothing. You can say, God, I want to have a relationship with you. Change me. Yeah. I want to yeah. see what you see. I want to feel what you feel about me. And, and as this happens, as you start loving God and, and, and stewarding a relationship with him intentionally, you're, you start loving yourself. You start, it says, love the Lord your God in the Bible. It says, and love your neighbor as yourself. So you start loving who God sees and who you are in Christ. And then you start seeing other people in such a loving way as well. You see their worth, even though they don't see their worth. And then you start helping them come to an understanding of their worth, of what God created them to be and are and precious and everything. So, um, yeah. So I wanted to add that before we continue on. Um, would you agree, Rob? Oh, 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what happened to both of us, guys. We're both very different characters. But it didn't change that I still also had low self-esteem. So I would do it by being loud, my reaction. Um, you know, I care too much about what people think. So I reacted like, okay, well, I'm going to act like a tough guy. So if anyone tries to, you know, make me feel little, I will, you know, stand over them because I'm, I will act tougher than them. So I responded in a different way than Rob. Rob was more quieter, staying in the background. You get me? But he, so he can manifest in different ways in all of us. But yeah. the problem is still the same, you know? So, uh, yeah. Good, man. So, uh, tell me then, you had an amazing part of your stories uh, where you actually have an encounter with God, how you start actually, um, you got kind of tricked in one sense, not tricked in a good way. I didn't know what other word to use, into going to church for the first time, right? So, can you tell us about how, how what how your life was before that, just before that, um, and then uh, the piece-by-piece piece stage of you starting to come to church and things like this. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, first of all, my life beforehand, you know, I was going to church, and then as many people do I find this a very common common thread in um, many people's lives that they go to church when they're young and then next thing they get a, they get a life they get married they move out and and this is a very typical thing for me that you move away from the church not necessarily the Lord but then as you move away life got tougher and tougher the journey um being married and i certainly can't you know now that years on i really can't pick anything out except for that the further that you uh, move away from god the less time you've spent with god the crazy life gets it's the only thing that i could say and while obviously with not god not behind your marriage it really really struggled and I got to an impossible stage, so it was just a, a mess, a crazy, a mess of emotions and fighting and all sorts of stuff without God. And then I had, in amongst all of that, my um, brother, he had, he, um, well, he got cancer, right, in, in a part of his body. Yeah. And I thought, because my life, do I continue here? I just keep just flowing on, and you yeah, keep keep going, yeah, yeah. And at that time, because I love my brother so much, I love all my family so much, and all of a sudden he came up and he had cancer, and and I was dealing with that with all the emotions of family, and I should have paid more attention. I have great regrets of not 
being with my brother, although I, I, I loved him a lot, I couldn't see him, but what comforted me is the doctors gave him a 90% chance of, of um, reconciliation with it all and that, and went through the operation and went through the um, chemo and all that sort of stuff and then my life was getting even more crazy and because of basically trying to understand everything that's going on and it was just really a world of mess happening anyway then one I would call a divine moment where you know because God creates divine appointments and I just randomly met my brother on my way home on my way working one day and I just bumped into him we bumped into each other at the service station which is and we grabbed a drink and then he hop, hopped in the truck and he um, said um, that he really needs me now and with that I thought wow things are not good to the point where I was um, after speaking with him and we both went on our way I was an emotional mess and at that time I didn't you know it was just like my mess was just here and I'm just breathing just breathing and then poof straight underneath and I was drowning and I didn't know what to do a bit emotional But in the yeah. middle of the mess, and I got home from work. Sorry. It's all right, mate. It's all right. I got home, and no one was home. And I walked into the door, and I fell to the floor. I fell on my knees. And I remember saying, God, I don't even know if you're real. And I said, if you're real, please come save my brother. Anyway. And then everyone come home and that changed everything very quickly. Everything went back to normal. Well, <laughs> the normal mess. Anyway, I um, got this random phone call from my cousin and he said, Hey, Rob, do you want to come to church with me? I'm going to get baptized. And I went, what? Are you already baptized? We got baptized when we were little kids, you know, when they did the sprinkling of the water and then he said, No, 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 this is for real, for real. Like we're gonna go to you know, watch me get into this bathtub with my clothes on and I'm thinking, Wow, okay. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll go. Anyway, I, I ended up going to the church on the Sunday morning, went by myself and then Met him at the, at the church, and <laughs> I remember this baptisms happening, and I missed it completely because I'm watching these guys in in the church with their hands in the air, watching and I'm praying in tongues, and I just that was very very foreign to me. I just thought, wow, this is really. It's really, really weird. And then next thing, I turn around, everything had finished, and the pastor's doing his preaching. Now, I remember his preaching being very riveting. Not that I know what it was about exactly, but I've never heard anyone speaking like that. It was amazing. And then he said, right, I now let's do an altar call. And an altar call. Anyway, so he's calling people to come out to the front that want to give their heart to the Lord. Now, there's something in me that is fear because remembering back that I'm a very, very quiet, there's no way I want to bring any attention to myself. I will drift away and hide. I was not going to go up. doesn't matter what. 
And then all of a sudden, I'm starting to get this really sharp pain from the top of my neck all the way down to the bottom of my chest, down my stomach. And now, this is just a very weird pain. It was just like a blade going right down the middle. I'm thinking, this is so weird. And then the guy said, hey, there's a guy with a really thin pain going right down the middle of his chest. And I'm thinking, what? How does he know that? I was like, it's not me. And I'm holding onto the chair. So I'm not sure that. You know, it would have looked funny. I'm not sure why I held onto the chair. I did, but anyway, he um he asked again, please, can someone come forward? Anyway, this guy got up and went forward. And I think, phew, it's not me. Anyway, he went to the front. And he said, this is not the guy. Please, please, can you come up? Anyway, way too much fear, just ruled by fear of man, and I didn't go. So, and I went home and um, probably would have been within maybe a day or two, another friend of mine rings me and says, hey, do you want to catch up with a few friends? Now, I remember this guy being um, quite influential and, and that, so I had a lot of favour toward him and I thought, yeah, I need a bit of that because I was really struggling financially pretty much so i thought hanging around with this guy could only be good for me so i went there and i remember taking a while and he, he said we had to be at some place at six o'clock or something and it was taking his time i said wow you must have really good friends and he's going why do you say that and i said because it's already seven you know you're not there yet anyway we go there and he pulls out in front of a church and i said wow this is church and he says so he tricked you he said, <laughs> he said, yeah, it's church. He said, <coughs> and I said, well, who has church on a Wednesday? And I said, yeah. he said, oh, you don't want to go? And I said, no, I'm good, I'm good. Anyway, we go to this front door, and um, the front door of the church, and I felt this thing drop in my spirit. Will you accept me today? And I thought, I'll tell you what. If I get asked to go for an altar call, I'll go up. And as soon as I walked into the church, that pain came straight back in my chest. And the pastor was pre um, in full swing preacher mode. Um, and, he just, and I grabbed my seat and he just stops. And he just said, there's some guy in the audience with a sharp pain in his chest needs to come forward right now. And I thought, Lord, I'm not going to deny you. And I went forward. And I went up front and and we went with a group of others as well because he created an altar call and we gave our hearts to the Lord and that was really amazing. Not that I felt anything tangible, but I just felt this release and relief that I'd actually done what I really needed to do and I felt this comfort. Yeah. And then he said, all right, now we're going to learn how to pray in the spirit. And I thought, wow, and that, I found that a, a, a quite a challenge at the beginning. But then yeah. as I started, there was a guy, the pastor was in front of my face. I didn't realize because you get the front, yeah, eyes closed and that. And I started, I started praying in the spirit. I didn't know how to do it before, but he showed me. Anyway, so as I'm praying, I get this picture in my head of my brother. Weird, I've never had a, 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 um, anything like that ever happen before. And as I'm seeing um, his face, I, I stop because I'm thinking, well, hang on a second, I'm getting a distraction here. I should be focusing on Jesus. And as I stop because I get shocked by this vision, the pastor says, don't stop, keep going. So, so I kept on going and then I saw... Um, my um, um my brother again and i saw all these lumps in his lungs and i saw them all disappear and vanish and to me that was a bit puzzling because i knew that's not where the cancer was and i and i thought well it doesn't i don't know i thought that's a bit strange anyway so when i got home um and I think the next day I rang him up 
and, and I didn't, I, get hold, I got hold of his wife and his wife said that he's in a 10 hour operation to get the cancer cut out of his lungs and I got excited. I thought, my goodness me, he doesn't have it anymore. I just, I just, I was jumping up and down. I was like so excited and then when my, um, I already knew it was gone. I, it just, I just knew because the, the vision and everything was so vivid, so out of the box of my thinking, I just knew it had to be God. I just knew it. And sure enough, um, his wife rang up and said Look, they couldn't find any cancer in his lungs. The doctor was going crazy because he was some special specialist from America that they got out to do it. And yeah, yeah. it was, was so exciting. And you... and I'm standing there, Lord, yeah. I am not going to deny you. My life is yours. <laughs> and it was just so much joy. Oh can't imagine yeah Oof. yeah because one of the life changing hinge yeah because my life that, changing everything changed after amazing that. Rob. that's amazing praise god for what he did man and that you had no knowledge that he had cancer in his lungs he officially no. did that's why they were going to do it you didn't, you didn't even know that he was going to have surgery an operation no i was sure you know yeah, nothing thought, wow it's yeah. Because he never really got into it. He just said, I need you. And I knew Yeah, when that. he spoke to you, that's what I wanted to say to you. Um, um, or mention that when he told you, when your big brother told you, I need you, what broke you was that he never needed anyone because he's a tough guy. He takes care of himself, he doesn't need you. Yeah, he's and the go-to guy when anyone has a fam family the, the go-to guy. So there we go. Yeah, so he was always held together. And for him to say such a thing, he broke you because now... It must be real serious for your brother to be such a strong guy, always held everyone together, to be so broken they would ask you or tell you, I need you. And that's yeah, why we, yeah. I had such a poor opinion of myself. I thought I was just like a little pillar and he's like a big pillar. Why would he yeah. want to <laughs> lean on me? You know, I just completely yeah. mucked up concept of myself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was it wasn't true what he looked he saw you as, yeah. You were so yeah. high in his hands, yeah. Praise yeah, God, man. Yeah, yeah. So. Wow. And I'll tell you the first thing I read out of the Bible straight after that, and is there's a part in the Bible that says, Now you have the mind of Christ. And I jumped to my feet and I started celebrating because I didn't have to rely on my mind, which I thought was completely flawed. And I thought, wow, he created everything. His mind is in my mind and he's in me and I'm in him. And all this concept was so huge. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's awesome, mate. Eh? Praise God. Yes, that is an amazing, amazing story. So we, we encourage you guys. We're going to pray at the end as well for any sickness, disease you mm. may have in your body. Jesus is alive. He rose again on the third day and he still heals. Um, yeah. He said, by his stripes, we were healed in the Bible. He says, by his stripes, we were healed. Uh, and so this is something he already paid for because he, and he paid for it in a, such a high price of getting tortured for us to have this. So we just receive when we pray um, and anything else you want to write on your comments. If you want prayer about, we'll pray for you. Even if we don't get to do it here right now live, when we close up, and I see it later or whatever, we will still pray for you, okay? So it's God that does it. So he hears our prayers. And um, so bring all your burdens and worries and cares to him. Yeah. Um, and to continue on, Rob, uh, a little bit more, um, you now, what's, you are married now, you, and uh, it's, it's, you do life together. Your wife's a believer as well. you Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, and um, you guys just do, do life together in the Lord. And one of the things you were saying about your previous marriage before you came to God was that God wasn't inside in the marriage. And Not yeah, and, and you and you felt like this is why it also that didn't work and he broke down so much and he got worse and worse. Um, because God didn't just and I'll let you share whatever you want from that. But, it got, but I wanted just to remind us that God didn't just invent marriage. He's the one who invented marriage and he invented it 
the way he decided it's going to be between a man and a woman. And the other bit was that he doesn't want to just have people get married and it's just them two uh, that become one flesh, but he wants us to be three. He wants to be included in the marriage. And that's how a successful marriage happens, where you include the one who invented uh, the thing, which is marriage, you include him inside it, and he wrote, and, he, and it's like a three-strand cord that can't be broken. Now. It's strong, yeah. and that's how you strengthen your marriage. You do it together with God, and that way also you're given your accountability to God. So you, when you feel like you don't want to respond to your husband or wife the way that you want to, you do it for the Lord's sake because you love yeah. God. He's also included in the marriage. You do the things you do. You honor your husband, your wife. Uh, you love each other, and you choose to do uh, to to you choose to love because of your love for God, even if you don't feel like it between you two in a specific day or a week because of what happened. Uh, yeah. Would you want to share anything else with that side of things, man? About the marriage? Well, I will share yeah. a little bit. The, the journey with a with a, with a relationship without God is a very tough one. See. When you leave the relationship, um, you don't, you're not actually, you, you get to go with it into the next relationship. You know, you take all your damage and you take everything with you into the next relationship. So you really need God to walk that journey through and to bring the healing in all those areas, you know, that perhaps you should have done beforehand. But, you know... <laughs> I don't know how to explain it except for the, you know, with God, there's a hundred percent chance of healing in every single area. Without Him, wow. yeah, yeah, all the damage is still there, and you bring it out. It's filtered through that, and you take it out on other people. Yeah, yeah. your new relationships, whatever else, your business relationships, everything. Oh, yeah, business. Yeah. Everything, you know, look, yeah. you have your mess, but with God, well, God's awesome. Yeah. God is awesome. He's, yeah. He yeah. brings you a lot of healing in, in, in a lot of places. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah. It's good. Robbie, uh, I want you to really, I want to, I want to really, uh, show you off a little bit with some of your art. Is yeah. that uh because as as we kind of another five minutes or so we'll we'll go on and then we'll pray for the people. But you now God uses you a lot in the gift that He gave you with your art. Before I, get, I say the art thing, I just wanted to mention one thing. This is the thing I need to encourage us to remember, guys. With there's a counterfeit version of love that gets promoted in the world, which is not really love, it's counterfeit, it's it's all about your needs and your self-seeking and when you're going to be marrying someone, are they going to please me? Are they going to make me happy? Are they going to take care of me? Are they going to serve me? Me, 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 me. It's self-seeking. And that's the yeah. counterfeit false version love. The God love, which he is the one who is love, and he's the only one who can define what love is because he is truly love, is not self-seeking. It's not about what you can take from somebody. It's about how you can bless someone, how you can you know, encourage them, uh, serve them, take care of them. And if two people come with that mindset of, I want to serve them, I want to take care of them, I want to protect them and the other one and respect them and honor them, it's all about how what they can give to that person. And the other person comes in saying, how can I give to them? How can I serve them? How can I take care of them? Then no one's I put a per, the other on the pedestal thinking they have to perform for me, for me to love them. Because anytime you put a person on a pedestal for them and expectations for them to need to serve you, take care of you, blah, 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 then they will fall short because they're people. And when they fall short, then they'll, you think, oh, I don't love them anymore. I fell out of love. There's no such thing as falling out of love if it's true love because love doesn't seek for what it can take. True love doesn't seek for what it can take from the person. So, And that's true love never fails. So um, this is what a big thing I wanted to take out of one of the things that uh, Rob was also mentioning, you guys. Remember that, okay? So if you're in that kind of relationship where you're looking for your husband or your wife to perform or, in other words, to do specific things so you can be pleased with them, then you'll put them in an expectation on them that God never told you to put on them. You be pleasing to them. You take care of them. You And when you pray for them, in the book of James, it says this, 
when you pray, you pray and miss because you pray for your own lusts, your own desires. So when you're praying for your husband and your wife or whatever, and you're praying for things for your own selfish gain, you're praying and it misses God. In other words, it doesn't go to God's ears. He hears them, but he doesn't react to them. Why? Because you, you're praying, oh, God, change my husband so he can serve me better, so he can make more money, so he can take care of me, so he can me, 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 me. It's okay prayers, but they're all based in selfishness. So we have to really recheck ourselves for why we're praying um, and why we feel like we're suffering if, uh, from our husband or our wife. Is it because it's just all selfish uh, focus that we have and our prayers and our desires? So, um, yeah, true, true too. And, you know, I'll tell you something. I was thinking, Lord, um, through this time of this pandemic and everything, and it's very, very simple. And I've cleaned up a lot of drama in my life with this simple thing that the Lord told me. And the Lord said to me, I, th I felt valueless. So I'm, we're going through this pandemic. I'm thinking, how good am I here? You know, I used to paint in churches. And all the sh churches are sat down. You know, like I'm, I felt like obsolete and useless. I didn't know what to do. And the Lord said, you want to be a world changer? And I said, yes, Lord, I want to be a world changer. And he said, you know how you will change the world? The only way you're going to change the world? And I said, what's that? What's that? And he said, come and have communion with me every morning. Basically, come and have a chat with me every morning. And he said, then you will change the world. No other way. Not going to happen. You're just doing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So, and that's huge. Yeah, yeah, huge. it's huge to do life with God like that. Yeah, set a part time to be with Him for sure, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. In the Bible, that. it says, uh, take up your cross daily and follow me. You know, so it's, He wants daily relationship. And that's that's exactly where you get your, your strategy, your strength, your hope. You see things from God's perspective instead of what the earthly perspective and what's going on, the, the mess that's happening in the world. You won't see it from there and get overcome by it. You'll see it from above. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's and your relationships with work, yes. home. Yes, exactly. Everything exactly. and you get an input. And it's supernatural, but we are supernatural, aren't we? Yeah, we are yes. beings from heaven. Yeah, um, we are yeah, made in the image and likeness of God, yes. He lives in us, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sit at the table all by yourself. And what if you're not? You really are with the Lord because the Lord's hanging to be with you. Yeah. You can be very short. If you're going to spend time with him, he is there. He's yes. not always quick to speak because the Lord said it's going to take time because I need you to spend time with me before I speak and you get headlong into drama chasing after what I've just told you. I just yeah. want to spend time with you, relax with you. It's like sitting with your partner on the couch, with your wife and your friends on the couch, just watching TV, just hanging out. That's what the Lord said. Yeah. That's what I'm after. Yeah. And yeah, lots of good, And if I can say something else too, yeah. I was thing, thinking about this thing of purity. And I thought, Lord, I'm praying for purity. Lord, I'm after purity, purity. And the Lord said to me, um, you're desperately trying to be pure. He said, just hang out with me because you know how when you spend time with people, they rub off on you and you become like the people you're hanging out with. And the Lord yeah. said, that's how I am. You come and I will rub off on you. And the journey is that you will be purified by just yes. hanging out and you will find that you won't do the things that you used to do you will choose different ways to do things that you would have chosen before and you'll find that and and as you travel the journey you look back and go whoa that's amazing you know when someone would say this i would say that and i'm not doing that anymore and i'm just it's just happened like that because of that relationship it's very important yeah man uh, it is actually a scripture in the bible where it says, as we behold him, we are be transformed in 2 Corinthians. Um, yeah. And yeah. that's that's a, 
that's it. You know, you be, when you behold him, in other words, you're spending time with him uh, and you're just focusing on him, you're actually being transformed. And like you said, it's rubbing off on you. I love the way you put it uh, because you're just hanging out with someone so much. Yeah. That's the, yeah. you know, rubbing off on you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's not so like awesome. a, yeah, you're not going to a science um, where some guys at the front are trying to teach you something or anything like that. Yeah. You know, and you think I've got to capture this and you get your notebook out. It's not like that. It's, yeah, it really is just like hanging out with your brother, your father, whoever it, that you're very relatable to. Yeah, because to me, my, I'm hanging out with Papa, my dad, I call him Papa, yeah. and he calls yeah. me champ. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. You know, uh, Rob says a lot, you know, and I heard God, I heard God say to me when he says that it's in the Bible as well. Jesus says, my, the, my sheep hear my voice. They hear his oh, voice. They don't just read his voice. We, we love the Bible and what God stamped for always for there to be in the Bible. So we stay within the boundary of scripture. But God also still speaks and he wants to speak to you because he wants a, he has a personal relationship with each one of us that want it. And he might say something to you that's not written in the Bible, like stop watching that TV show called blah, blah, blah. And he says the actual show. Why? Because you're the one watching it. I'm not the one watching it. So he'll say something different to me because of my life and what I'm doing. We start doing or stop doing or do more of. And it's all to do with because he cares about us and loves us and wants us to grow yeah. in a relationship. He loves our relationship with us. He loves us. In fact, he says, come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Notice, he doesn't need to come because he's already there for you. He doesn't need to come because his arms are wide open to you. That's why he didn't say, I'll come. At that scripture there, he says, come to me, or you heavy burden. He will never say to you, come to me, if he won't accept you coming to him. Or if you had to do some rituals and routines for you to be able to come to him. He just says, come to me, or you are heavy burden, I'll give you rest. In fact, he says, come boldly in another place in Hebrews, come boldly to the throne of grace for help, to receive help in your time of trouble, when you need it. So again, who's doing the coming? He's not doing the coming. He's already got his arms wide open, made it available for you to choose to put your attention and come to him because he will not reject you from coming to him. But we get distracted and go to every single thing else. In fact, we will call a friend quicker than go to God where he's available completely. It won't go to God first. I'm not saying don't go to your best friend and talk to them or your mother, your father, your sister, brother, whoever it is that you go to, but learn to go to him first. He loves you and he loves to hear from you. He loves to carry your burdens and take it to another level from that as well is grow from there to not just come into him to get something from him. Go to him because you love him and you just want to spend time with him like Rob was saying, where you're just sitting with the person that you're relatable to and just want to sit there you don't even have to hear anything. You just love that you're spending time, quality time with him. You're going for a walk. Go for a walk knowing that he's with you. And if you put that in your heart, like I'm going to go for a walk with Jesus right now. I'm going to go for a walk with God right now. God has no problem being everywhere at once. And he yeah. loves that you now intentionally want this walk to be dedicated to him, to be with yeah. him, for a bike ride with him, for a drive yeah. with him. He loves that. So, if, But you yeah. have to be intentional about that. Okay? So... Involving yeah. in your life and everything changes from there. Yeah. 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 So, Rob, um, let's let me just spend a few minutes before we pray for people, like I said a few minutes before, but some good things came out, uh, which was great. But tell them, show them a couple of the of your paintings that you do. See what Rob does, guys. He uh I, I love it. He 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 will just when you said I was painting in churches, what that means was he was invited to conferences, churches, things, events that will happen because of his painting. In the Bible, it says your gift will make room for you and bring you before kings. Mm -hmm. God gave him his gift to paint. But the, the, what's different is not he, he doesn't just paint a, a painting that he just does in his spare time or whenever he feels like it. But there's times where he will stand in front in an allocated area at a church service or an event, a worship time or whatever's going on and yeah. out of the blue he wait for the lord to give him the picture that god wants him to paint so they many many people call this prophetic art i don't go with that name i i'm cool with it but i've always never gone with that name because i don't feel it's always prophetic that's not about a future event 
uh, it's Holy Spirit inspired art. So the, out of the blue, the Holy Spirit will inspire an image for him to write, to start uh, painting. And he will paint that. Usually he'll try to finish it within the amount of time that he has uh, yeah. at that event. So it's amazing things that, it, that, they, that I've seen, that the impact that it's had with people crying, uh, wanting to have that painting because it spoke to them specifically that was in that event. Uh, so many times over and over of, of um, just encounters people had had with God, uh, God speaking yeah. to them or answering something that they wanted answered when they went to that event. They wanted an answer about something and Rob painted that painting that answered them what they were longing for. It's, it's amazing. And not just him, other people do this as well. So this is what he does. And so I'll leave that to you now, uh, Rob, turn it to you. You told me that you have a couple of paintings already behind you that you wanted to uh, speak about. Um, but so go for uh -huh. it, I'll yeah, man. You can share more about this if you want, or and even explain your paintings. Okay. Well, this one, uh, wrong side. This one first. <laughs> uh, can you can you see this one? Okay. Yes, I I can see it. So they can I can see it. So they can see it. Okay. I'll. Uh, no problem. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, this one is a picture that I got in the beginning of of the the pandemic. And, you know, and I was just thinking, how can the, the devil launch such an attack like that on, on the earth and, and so on. And I got this vision of all the, um, my, the mighty ones of God, you know, all the Christ believers to rise up. And I, and I, and I saw a vision of Jesus burning hot um with fire and we are too and the lord's calling us to get up out of the rubble out of the storm and rise up and um i just found that it was a very um mighty action just to stand up in christ and and find out not do what everyone else is doing but find out what god has for you to do through this time and i found it very important to seek god to find out what he's calling you into at this time because seriously the world needs you you yeah, know all creation is rising up for the sons of god to to rise up as sons and and daughters to yeah. rise up find out what the lord wants don't go ahead and do what you think go ahead find out what the lord is calling you to right now he's calling you he is calling you yeah. And this one here. Wait, wait, just for that, uh, Rob. Um, oh, okay. So, you know, one thing I want to explain for some people that don't know the Bible too well, the reason why he made Jesus with fire uh, is because in the Bible he says, "My our God is a consuming fire. Mm. So uh, it, it mentions that he's burning for passion. Burn, burning is, is a God of fire. And in another place he says that he has made his ministers, which is the people, us that believe in him, uh, yeah. flames of fire again flames of fire in acts in chapter 2 in the bible when the holy spirit came upon the first believers it, it was it was a tongues of fire were upon them yeah. on the top of their head so mm -hmm. fire is very much it's not just about hell it's also the good purification fire that he uh, consumes his believers and he's also consumed with so it's that's all great painting and such a great message man that Yes, this is a, a weird time. It is, but we were born for this time. And we need to spend time with God and find out what is what you want me to do. And God, God is looking for his people to be shining and bringing hope to the hopeless right now, to the people that are so afraid, so scared because they're hearing of wars and rumors of wars and you know, this uh these sicknesses, this, that, whatever, and people are terrified. But we Christians, um, we know about all this stuff and we were meant to be shining in this time, not also panicking in this time and showing people the way. So get up like that picture shows. Get up, believer, and shine. Get up and bring that hope, bring that truth, bring that love, bring that way, the truth and the life to those who don't know what's going on and are panicking. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So you were going to show us the other painting as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one I, I painted last week when um, we heard uh, the altercation with Russia and uh, the Ukraine, and 
Yeah. I, you know, for me, I, I've been praying a lot about it. I think there's a lot more to it than we, um, yeah, it's than that we are hearing on the news and yeah. so on. But I was just praying, you know, Lord, just passionately. And, um, and I got this picture of, you know, when Peter was, um, imprisoned and um that um that they were going to kill him the next next day and all the church cried out and jesus was um and um peter was released from prison and that's the thing that i got that um through prayer and i believe every prayer has a miracle attached to it and i and um i believe that by our prayers moves the hand of God and I believe that he's I could see I've got a vision of him punching through for the breakthrough the mighty hand of God through prayer you see I believe there's a very real thing that we can do is praying and I think um praying is the the first and foremost thing that we should do in every situation and I believe that we can do great things yeah. Um, <clears throat> through praying, and this is a by praying, moving the hand of God. To yeah. Do, uh, to, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great, great, man. And I and I really believe that. Yet, um, in our prayers, we can move the hand of God to do great yes. and things. You know, because we're here and we feel helpless and and lost, and we don't know what to do. And I'm thinking, wow, look at all this drama over there. But little old me, what can I do? While well, little old me, we can do great things. Yes. Remember, uh, yeah. you're, we're ambassadors of the yes. Lord, and we can decree and declare of what we would have done together with the Lord on the earth. And I, and I believe that we can, as Christ ones, bring great breakthrough. So the Lord knows what's happening. Spending time with the Lord and praying break strongholds yeah break there's actually a power of the enemy yes yes there's a scripture in the bible that says uh for according for to the uh, for the works of my hands command you me god says that so he's asking us to command his hand and it's not that we, we're telling god what to do he wants us because we are the vessels of in he the earth that he puts us is he wants us to speak his will into being for that yeah. to come, his will be done, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So we command his desires to bring peace. His desires to stop the, the, the shedding of blood and innocence and all this kind of stuff. So we got to be praying for this stuff. So, yeah, man, really great symbology. Yeah. Right this there. is the yeah. vision that I got. You know, a lot, I, I, mean, I, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, while in the Bible it says this and that and all these horrors are going to happen. Well, yes, that's true. But that doesn't stop you from trying to make a difference yeah. by your prayers. You know, these things may happen because we, we're not getting up. So, yeah, I agree with you. If I can add something there, Rob, is yeah. many, many people think they, they, their prayers won't do anything because it's written in the Bible because they presume that this is the time of the, the section of the Bible where it talks about uh, you know, the end. Well, if that's the end, because that, that's going to happen for sure, no matter what we do, because it's written down what happens when the, the false prophet comes, the beast, the antichrist comes into the scene. That's written down. All of it's going to play out exactly even when he gets thrown into the lake of fire and all the, you know, the false prophet and everything else with it. But people presume that this is the time now that's happening, unfolding. So therefore, what's my prayer going to do? But what I'm going to say to you is, what if you're wrong? What if that teaching that taught you that, and you assume that this is now this time, that you're wrong, and therefore you're not praying, uh, and you're you're not participating in what God wants you to pray into. So He does so because it's not now the time. I believe completely this is not the time. In fact, it's a hundred percent not the time of the end because Jesus says in the Bible, when you hear, He warns us to be careful of people saying that the end is now, because He says this. When you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. The end is not yet. He literally, in that passage, he makes sure to say, listen, this is where you, you know where the end is not yet. That doesn't mean we live a life, we don't care, we do whatever we want. It means, okay, 
because we need to know the times and seasons and the signs of the coming. So we got to know that if he says the signs of the coming, when he says this scripture, he also tells us when it isn't. When you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled. Listen to what I think. Don't be afraid. Don't react. Don't you know panic. The end is not yet. So therefore, it is a time to be praying for these things to stop. It is a time to be praying for these things to change because it is not the end time. So yeah. meaning the end. end you know, um, we know the end day started from the times when Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. We're not, we're not talking about that. Uh, we're talking about when people are thinking it's the end end. It's not the end end. So um, get in your prayer, declare, command, speak the things that are the will of God. When you're spending time with him, yeah. he will show you what to pray yeah. into and how to pray. Yeah. Yeah, because that is a trap. You know, for many years we were led to believe and there was a lot of pre preaching and teaching that, you know, the world's going to end soon. The world's yeah. going to end soon. So I thought, what's the point? I'm packing my bags ready to leave this planet. Yeah. But just imagine you're in a place, if you're ready to leave, well, you really don't care what's actually going to happen. Yeah. But if you're going to stay and say the world says, oh, you're not going yet, you're staying here, then you're going to do your best to look after your place and protect it. Yeah. So, and I think that's God is calling us to stand up and to to be the ambassadors of the land, not have to escape from this land that's falling into um, ruin, but to be um, yeah. declarers Useful. of the time, yeah. not how it's going to be, not on my watch, Lord, please. Yes. Not on my watch, teach me, show me what do I need to pray right now. Yes, now. yes. Uh, and that's Evan, what, what, do I, what do I need to do? do? What do I need to post? What do I need to uh, say? Uh, All uh, of it. Yeah, together, yeah. That's the vision I've got. Yeah, yeah. My, that's good, man. Um, so, I... I actually wrote a post today. Uh, I'll read it out because it goes along with what's come up now. Uh, and I think, again, it's not a coincidence because we're going with the flow. I, uh, I wrote, while some Christians constantly focus on escaping in the rapture, every time they see things are getting uncomfortable for them here on earth, the sons and daughters of God focus on being about their Lord's business until he comes. They yeah. focus on making a difference for the kingdom of God, spreading the gospel, doing things yeah. to help. Yeah where it's needed, shining Jesus brighter as darkness increases in this world. For, for one, their focus is driven by the true godly love because love is not selfish. Mm. It's not, oh, take me away, I don't want to be here. The other's focus is driven by self selfishness and what would benefit them. My yeah. brothers and sisters yeah. in Christ, choose to be about your heavenly Father's business, which is driven by selfless love and not self-seeking. And when our Lord comes, He comes. And when, so, in other words, when God decides to send Jesus to come, second coming, so be it. We just got to live a lifestyle of readiness, and that's it. Not uh, be so consumed with, you know, is he going to come? It's a rapture. Get ready. It's the rapture. Man, go and preach the gospel. Love people. Feed the poor, the needy. Uh, you know, post something that's going to help people that God gives you to post on your Facebook page. You know, write a book. I don't know. Go, you know, <laughs> feed people that are hungry. Be useful while we're here and let God decide when the end is and it's completely the end. Yeah. It's yeah. Good, man. Well, I got it's like me, I, I work at a um a um a fairly large company I would call. And we um have different sites and I sort of overlook one of the sites. And um we have guys that come in for a day to do a job. And then the next day they've gone. Yeah. And compared to the work of the guys that are there day after day, you always have to check the work of the guy that comes for the one day because they know they're not going to be there the next day and their work is half-hearted. Their heart's not really in it. Yes. And that's the trick I think the devil's doing on Christians with with um, being here because we're thinking we're well, we're not going to be here for very long, so our effort yeah. is very poor. But if we go in here, we know, you know, you're going to be here for the long while, for the long thing, and I will work unto the Lord and do the very best I can do with what yeah. the Lord has called me to do. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the attitude we have to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, man, that's that's good. 
Praise God, man. Like I said, guys, we were just going, we were talking uh, Rob's story, but also with these kind of interviews, we just go with the flow. Like the Holy Spirit starts bringing in different subjects, different things to speak into a little bit because of who's yeah. going to see it uh, or is watching right now. And it will help you in some area or it will bless you or encourage you in some area or, or um, confirm some things, you know. So I hope this uh, this was good for you guys. It blessed you. It, uh, share it if you did to others that you think it might um, encourage them today. But um, Rob, let's uh, wind it down and let's uh, we'll just pray for people. Yeah. yeah. Um, first, I'll pray if anyone if anyone wants to start a relationship with Jesus, uh, we're going to do a prayer. I'll pray. I pray that you can follow, um, and it's just to, it's just to help you learn how to pray and ask the Lord to tell Him, "I want this, Lord. I want to be forgiven. I want to be transformed. I want to have life with You." Um, and it's the beginning step that you can take. Um, and so if you if you want that, you can pray this right now from your heart, okay? So say, God, I, I thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for me, to die for my sins, to take my place on the cross, to give me a new life, to make me new to cleanse me from the wrongs I've done. I want you to change me, Lord. I want you to live inside of me by your spirit and use me for your glory. Use me to make a difference in this life. Show me my worth in your eyes. I want to have a real relationship with you. And today I surrender to you. And I say that I am yours. I give you my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that, guys, that's amazing. That's awesome. And I will encourage you to download the Bible. Go buy a physical Bible. Whatever you need to do. But start reading the Bible and start doing what it says. So you can start with the book of Matthew. Start reading the New Testament because it's from Jesus onwards. And you hear what Jesus says. Um, especially in the book of Matthew, um, and then go from there. After Matthew, read um, read James, then read 1 John, then read uh, Peter, 1 Peter, things like this. You, you know, replay this and you can get what I just said if you want to. Um, and But make sure that you apply what you read. That is the big deal right there. Apply what you read. Learn to spend time with God in the mornings and whatever days of your life, the, 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 your routine of your life. But also apply what you read. Learn to read every day because it's like food for your spirit that will grow you stronger, yeah. more healthy. Like food will do physically, that will do the spiritual. And then, but the biggest thing in the Bible, in James, book of James, it says this, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Which means is if you're not doing what you read and what you hear from the Bible, then you're deceiving yourself. You're just, you know, someone that's like a parrot, repeats things or says, I read it or just goes to church. It's about doing the Bible, doing the Word of God, apply it. So I encourage you to do that. You'll also find uh, some helpful material on the website that's strolling on the bottom, which is godswaycenter.com. Um, there's different areas where you can get a bit more um, mm. stuff, different levels of where you're at with God. You'll hear testimonies there as well. Find testimonies and videos. You'll find music there as well, teachings. So go for it. But um, for you because uh, for you, um, uh, Rob, you got a, a Facebook page for this for your prophetic art and you also have a YouTube channel, right? Yes. Uh, so I got the YouTube channel link. I actually got it on the details in the description below of this video that you're watching, guys. So check it out and you'll find the actual link to get to his YouTube channel. And it's great. He just, you see him painting in a speed format, like he fast forwards it. And then he says a few words about the thing that he, the painting that he painted. And it's really amazing. And there's also the Facebook page, which is a, a prophetic, what I got it here, wait. Uh, Robert Gerlach's Prophetic Art, right? Mm, yes. Yeah. So that's Robert Gerlach's Prophetic Art. I'll probably put the link as well when we hang up the live stream so people can click on it as well. Um, and you can message um, Rob as well. If you have any questions for him as well, you can message him on the Facebook page, I guess. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. some of the way they can connect with you. Uh, but go check out the, the paintings. It'll really bless you. But before we go, me and Rob are just going to pray as we feel led 
for you guys, uh, for situations, uh, for the things we spoke about as well, and for you guys watching. Uh, first yeah, of all, I want to yeah. pray for uh, healing. Any one of you guys that are feeling pain in your body, have any sickness, disease, just if, you, if you're if you able to put your hand where uh, your where you need the healing, where you need the touch from God right now. And uh, Rob's going to agree with me with my prayer here, and we're going to pray for you. And Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the one who wants to touch you. Just receive. Believe and receive. Just accept the prayer. Don't think too much uh, or go, but what if, but this. Let that go, man. Just receive, okay, like a child. So I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the victory, Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the weeping post, for being whipped and by your stripes we were healed you're willing to be tortured so we can be healed you are willing to be tortured so we can receive your supernatural peace so we can receive your righteousness your goodness your way your truth we can receive you and everything that comes with you the inheritance that comes with you so in the name of jesus right now every person that's in pain right now every person needs healing every sickness every disease right now all sickness and disease, go right now. All pain, go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, completely leave this body and never return again. And every effect it's had, every bit of the body that needs healing, I just declare right now the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ to come upon you. The victory of Jesus Christ is by his blood. Be healed right now, body, in Jesus Christ's name. Everything that needs to become new, any organ that needs a new organ there, everything in the name of Jesus, I just speak that to come upon you as well in Jesus Christ's name. For people that need their eyes to be healed, I just speak their eyes to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, completely 2020 vision. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rob, if you're getting anything as well, you want to pray for anybody, especially can you pray for people with self Low self-esteem, um, you know, they, they think low of their worth as well and are, are afraid of people, things like this, things that you went through. It would be very powerful if you can pray for that, man. Yeah. Thank you for the words. Dear Father God, Lord, I lift up everyone that felt that way. Oh, I felt that is struggling with self-confidence that has a very low self-esteem and feels worthless and feels hopeless and and lost and really not knowing where where they're at what to do how am i going to get through this lord i don't feel worthy and i thank you father god that you will just touch them right now tangibly that they'll feel you touching them right now in the mighty name of jesus i thank you that you would encourage them lord <clears throat> that you would loose them from this bind, that they're able to step outside themselves and become who they are meant to be in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you. That was a very real thing for me, Lord, and I thank you that you have permission to be who you want to be in Christ, to be free, bold, dynamic for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for a supernatural intervention, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, encouragement to come their way, strength to come their way, relationship from you, Father, that would lead them out into, um, into strength to be bold and courageous for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, that what they're feeling is just an illusion. It's not true. It really isn't true. It was an illusion, a deception from the enemy because of the greatness in you. The devil is so scared and frightened for you to discover. Lord, if you'd only look past that and realize the greatness that is in you, that the devil's been trying to hide from you for many years. And I thank you for that release, Lord, the boldness, the amazing, the purpose would be great for you guys because... What the devil is showing you that he is trying to hold you back from something great. And I thank you for that release. That, hey, there is more, much more, much more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yeah. 
Amen, amen. Uh, someone's asked to, for us to pray for uh, those who are struggling with mental Ill, illness and depression. So, yeah, Father, we just want to lift these people up that are watching right now that are suffering with uh, mental illness and depression, that, uh, that you would consume that and you would bring your comfort, your truth, your peace in Jesus Christ's name. And all mental illness and depression will disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. That the mind of Christ will increase in them and overpower every negative thought and every thought that's causing the emotions and the feelings that they're getting to feel bound in Jesus Christ's name with depression. Everything to do with suicide upon these people in the name of Jesus. That's yes. Satan's trying to bring over them as thoughts to commit suicide. We command you, devil, let them go in the name of Jesus Christ. All the demonic trying to whisper in their ears and in their minds to commit suicide, to take their life and they'll be better. That is a lie, and we just command the light to be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask for your truth about them and their purpose and their love and their, how much you love them and your peace to just overwhelm them in the name of Jesus Christ right now, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Um, would you pray for marriages as well, Rob? Because I, I basically want to go through some of the things to pray into that uh, we mentioned. And we spoke a little bit about. So just pray for a blessing over people's marriages, for people to really um, learn to do marriage with God and not just as a couple by themselves, you know, like we spoke about. And whatever else comes to you in that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for the words. So, dear Father God, I just thank you for every relationship every marriage lord i thank you father god that you would weave in the middle of it all lord in the mighty name of jesus lord god i thank you for your great your mercy and compassion lord that not only will you bring relationship into righteousness lord dear father god i thank you for your leading lord and for your encouragement lord and that you are the way i thank you for the relationships that are doing well and i thank you for them so much lord they are centered in you lord and I also lift up the ones that are struggling the ones that are thinking hey you know what i'm gonna leave i can't do this anymore i thank you for a supernatural strength to come over them right now i thank you for angels that would come and surround them to restore their hope lord in jesus name i thank you for for thoughts that will just you know the enemy is bombarding them i know how this is the enemy will bombard them hard and for every reason that you need to get out of there i think we come against that in jesus name and i thank you father for your thoughts and your word that would come in for their situation right now and i thank you for healing right healing in all in the relationships and in jesus name i thank you for hope restored you yes. know because hope has your future and i thank you for hope that would come to every relationship right now to the ones that are struggling and even the ones that are lord i thank you for the hope that would come and flood them in yes. jesus name amen thank you lord yeah, we, I just pray also for relationships to learn to love one another with God's description of love, selfless, yes. in Jesus Christ's name. Thank yeah. you, Father. And I pray that they will, all couples will see each other from your perspective in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord God. I want to pray also for... Uh, um, the people in fear right now with all this uh, stuff that's going on with wars, rumors of wars and the things we spoke about. I, I just pray, like I said, only holding on and, and knowing Jesus will give you true peace because he is the Prince of Peace. And going through this time with him truthfully, like Rob was saying before, sitting down, having your coffee, acknowledging him, being with him, you know, like your, like your best friend, the person that you can just relax with. Uh, just learn to do life with him. He's the one you're going to, he's, he'll rub off on you, including his peace. Um, so 
this is the answer or the steps you need to take. But also let me pray right now for you guys that have been still tormented with fear um, about these times that are going on and where it's going, where it's heading and what are going to do and all that. So, Father, we just pray right now. Peace on them in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Man, Thank you, Lord God. God. And your love in the name of Jesus that cast out all fear right now. Right now. Fear, go in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Peace. Lord. Thank you, Father. Feel them more and more and more. Love, power, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, uh, Rob, do you want to say any last thing before I close up? And this, or are you good? Well, uh, it's just been an honor to be on, and it's been an honor to talk about the subjects subject talked um, through and prayed through. And, um, I just thank you, Andrew. Andrew's um, one of the guys that um, the Lord led me to when I when I first come back to the or come to the Lord, and through the journey and. Um, we've been brothers for many years and well, Andrew's been really like a father to me in the faith and it's, and God will lead you, you know, if you're really looking, ask God and he will take you to, to a group of people on that who you can really journey together and you know, it's, we're all family and you know, ask, ask the Lord, he will bring someone that in journey and Andrew's been that, he's been We've known each other for years, so um, yeah. he was a, he's a great guy. A great mate, you're guy. a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an honor to know you, Robbie. You're uh, the most amazing, biggest, caring heart. I want to get him on again when we talk about a topic of different sorts, especially the topic of giving. I've never met anyone who gives like him. Um, so, like, the, just uh, and not just I'm talking about little things it's just amazing and it's been really an inspire inspiration to watch him though he's caring hard his love his uh his desire to serve people um yeah so, so connect with him on the facebook um but i'll get him on again and because i'm going to start also doing not just talking about the people's stories but we're going to do topics so we'll we'll just and it's going to be very laid back like this we just talk something pops up we'll speak into that a little bit things like this okay guys so um yeah all right. So we're going to say goodbye, though. And thank you for sticking around with us and joining us. It's been uh, wonderful to have you. And thank mm -hmm. you, Rob, man, for mm -hmm. saying yes and uh, joining me on this uh, live stream. But, yeah, thank we'll talk you. again soon. Okay? Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, man. See you, mate. Bye-bye. God bless everyone. Yeah, bye. bye.